Hello everyone, these are EKG cases from the class uh, for 2020 to 2021. This was the competency exam that we just had. Um, I decided I would make another rapid review of these cases for our future classes who just or people who just want to um, look over some EKGs really fast. So in the interest of time, we're going through these uh, cases real quick. Case number one, a 40-year-old male comes in, uh, history of chest pain, comes into the emergency department. He was pain-free. Then four minutes later, he, he had more chest pain, and he got a repeat EKG. So the first EKG looks in. We see a lot of uh, T-wave inversion down there in, in the lead five rhythm strip. We wonder about ischemia because B4, 5, and 6 all have what looks to be some T-wave inversion, even around uh, V3. Um, and so we get a repeat EKG, and we begin to see this classical pattern of ST elevation. We see it a little bit uh, prominent here in V2, V3, V4, V5, a smidgen in V6. So this is an example of an anterior MI. It is definitely in the anterior lateral leads. V4, 5, and 6 are anterior lateral, and he's got uh, changes in the anterior septal leads as well. Case two, emergency department, chest pain, um, 20 years old, um, kind of a clinical clue there. Um, so here's the EKG. What do you see here? A lot of people um, were having trouble with this one. Um, but when you see the when you see the P wave so close to the QRS, it is really, really close. There's, there's not even a PR interval here. And so this is a form of Wolf Parkinson White. You begin to see it, you see a smidgen of the, of the delta wave here. There's the P and there's that slurring of the PR segment. Remember, you'll have a P wave and then the PR interval is from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. But just, you know, but in between the P wave and the QRS is supposed to be this PR segment, this little flat area. But right there, this is probably the best example on this, is that it's not there. In other words, this P wave is not really adequately conducting the normal way because it, almost right after the P wave, uh, the atria depolarize, we're getting a, another um, bypass track going straight to the ventricles. So, WPW example, very sneaky in this one. And a lot of times the, the, the clue is not so much the delta wave as it is how close the P wave is to the QRS complex. Twenty years old is back. ERs hopping today, so we get another EKG. What are we going to look at? Well, here's our famous rabbit ears. We see the rhythm down here, and, and look how the P wave has changed. Well, it, I mean, this is nice that we can correlate because this is the same patient. But look, we see the P wave, we see the PR segment now that we didn't see before. And look what, you know, everything has changed. Remember, remember the last EKG? Let's take a look. See up here how this PR segment was so slurred? Same patient. And now we see the PR segment that we were talking about last time. Beautiful example of how the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome can be rate-dependent. Okay, back to, the, back to this EKG. There's an R and an R prime here, and that's going to be your rabbit ears of bundle branch block. The R, beginning of the R way, there's an R, there's an S, there's an R prime right there in. So the beginning of the... You measure from the beginning of this R to the end of this R prime. And it's going to be bigger than 0 0.12. Because it's upward in V1 or V2, it's on the right side. And so the deformity uh, sort of names the side. And so this is right bundle branch block. Yes, I see it over here, but we name it according to whether or not it's uh, upward in on this side or on its opposite side down here. You don't see the deformity over here. Right bundle branch block. Another ER patient. 
He comes in here, you look at the EKG, what do you see? Okay, this one gave a lot of people trouble too. It always does. It's irregularly irregular, right? Does it look regular to you? No, it shouldn't. Look at all that irregularity there. Even though they don't give us a rhythm strip. If they give us a rhythm strip, it'd be too easy. We're supposed to just look at what we've got. Is it regular or irregularly irregular? It's irregularly irregular. Are there visible P waves? No. Well, it's not fair. I really can't see. It doesn't matter. It's atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response. Well, couldn't it be VTAC or some crazy ventricular rhythm? Well, yeah, if it was wide, but look over here. It gives you the clinical clues. This is not a wide rhythm. This is a narrow rhythm. It's got to be coming from above the ventricles. It's atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response. Case number five. The clue here is this 86-year-old dude, and he's got a pacemaker. Okay, so anytime you see that in a question, you know it's probably going to be some problem with the pacemaker. Okay, pretty slow rhythm here, right? Like, whoa, what's, sorry about that little pop-up, I can't really control it. Um, either this is super slow or we're missing something. But look at these little spikes. There's a little spike before a QRS, right? There's a little spike with nothing. This little spike is supposed to be the pacemaker depolarizing the ventricle, and that's what's happening here, but it's not happening over here. So this here is an example of a pacemaker failing to capture. Failing to capture means the pacemaker has failed to capture the depolarization of the ventricle. Case number six, chest pain and palpitations. Of all the possibilities, what's the most important cause to consider? This gave some people um, some irritation, too. Look at this. Now, as opposed to this one, which appears irregularly irregular, let's go to this one. Pretty regular, huh? Even though they don't give us a rhythm strip, we use what we've got. It looks pretty regular. And it's wide. Look over here. It's wide. It's wide. It's wide. So this is, a, this is regular coming from the ventricle. So when it's wide like this, this is um, most likely the thing we've got to consider is VTAC. You know, it said, what's the most important cause? If you're on call and you get this, you think about VTAC until somebody else proves it otherwise. you got to take the, the worst case scenario. Now, the next morning when everybody's sitting around the table, they can splinter this out and say, oh, let's be academic. Could this be really supraventricular tachycardia with some kind of bundle branch block? Yeah, it could be because that's fast with no visible P waves too. And we throw a little bundle branch in there. Now we make it wide. So now we make something from the atria look more like the ventricle. But we can talk about that later. So I put this in so you can have a rapid differential. It's VTAC, VTAC, VTAC until proven otherwise. Yes, it could be SVT with bundle branch block too, but much lower, much less dangerous than the VTAC because the VTAC, the person has lost cardiac output. Oops, let me just, 22-year-old um, comes in. She's got some problems. Let's look at the EKG. Let's just focus on that. Okay, what do you see? Is it irregular or regular? It's pretty regular. Okay, well, how fast is it going? Let's count. 300, 150, 175, 60, 50. It's going maybe 52, 53, 54, something like that. This is an example of sinus bradycardia. It's got P waves. It's got QRSs and Ts. Sinus bradycardia. And just remember, half of all these, you know, these rhythm problems, <clears throat> they're always going to want to know rate, your ability to count the rate and decide what it is. Remember, if it's less than 60, it's sinus bradycardia. If it's 60 to 100, it's going to be sinus rhythm. If it's going about 100 to 150, it's going to be sinus tachycardia. If it's 150 to 250, 
it's either atrial tachycardia if you see P waves or it's supraventricular tachycardia if you don't see P waves, SVT. Even faster than that, 250 to 350, and it looks like sawtooth, you're now into atrial flutter territory. So again, everything really depends on this, the ability to know the speed limits. Number eight, let's look at the EKG. What do you think about this EKG? Well, this is a little on the tricky side. You notice that these, QRS, these QRSs are pretty tall. And so let's just go over real quick some of the, some of the rapid rules to know if we're dealing with uh, LVH, left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, so the rule of 35 says uh, V1 or V2, the S wave, plus, whichever is taller, uh, V5 uh, or V6, if it's greater than 35. That's the rule of 35. That's why they call it the rule of 35, because you have to add them up to 35. So let's just take this guy here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Nope, doesn't meet criteria. Let's go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Nope, not quite 35 yet. Let's look at this guy, 5, 10, Still doesn't match. So maybe this, this is not LVH. Okay? And then we say, is this guy over here greater than 25? I, I can remember that because this has a 5 in it. Okay? 5, 10, 15, 20. It's not greater than 25. Is this over here greater than 20? 5, 10, 15, 20. It's right on the borderline, isn't it? It's right on the borderline. Another um, another one is if the R wave in AVL is greater than 11, it would be criteria. This EKG is really tricky, because and it's not gr on great paper, but um, it's supposed to be representative of LVH. And I think it's because of this one, 5, 10, 15, 20. It's supposed to be. There's a little bit at the bottom. It's right on the border. So they were calling it um, LVH. Hopefully, um, on your boards, you'll have something a little bit more obvious, but it gave us a chance to review. Case number nine. What do you think about this? This gave some people trouble because people got a little dizzy with all this stuff going on. So whenever you see a stuff like this, they, they can take a, re a rhythm, this just regular rhythm, and they can make it a little on the um, confusing side. All they have to do is speed it up. But let's make sense. That is different than that. Therefore, this must be a T wave and that must be a P wave. Why? Because they look different. They have different morphology. They're just faster. Okay? This is QRS. It's narrow. This is coming from the atria. It's not ventricular, okay? It's regular. It's not irregular. So we can just let our mind give us those clues right there. Look over here. You can see a little bit of difference in morphology because it's slowing down, apparently, you know, just from the time that this was taken. But how fast is this thing going to start with? Let's see if we can find something. Um, from here to here is 300, 150, 100, a little bit faster than 100. Okay, so what do you think goes a little bit faster than 100? This is just simple old sinus tachycardia. But look, when they speed it up with a couple of little funny rhythms there, and you got something that confuses 30% of the class. Last one. What do you think about this one? Well, I see a little bit of irregularity here, right? Do you? Is it irregularly irregular or regularly irregular? It's regularly irregular. It's not atrial fibrillation, number one, because of that. Number two, it's not atrial fibrillation because I see visible P waves. They're everywhere, right? So this illustrates when we're looking at P waves, look at the PR intervals. There it is there. I'm making the mental case that it got a little longer, getting a little longer, getting a little longer, getting a lot longer. And then I have something here, and even you can see it better here. There's a P wave, 
but no QRS. Oops, sorry. <laughs> but no QRS. And then the P wave starts back, and it resets itself back to this smaller PR interval. And then you can already see it getting longer and longer again. And that's the pattern of Winky Bot. Okay? That's a Mobitz. Um, it is a Mobitz 1. It's an AV block type 2. A first degree AV block would be where all the PR intervals are fixed greater than 0 0.2. Then you've got your second degree AV blocks, and they subcategorize that to Mobitz 1 and Mobitz 2. Mobitz 1, Winky Bot, Mobitz 2 is your 2 to 1 block or 3 to 1 blocks like that. In other words, if you found something where every single time you had a you had two to one, this is one and two, two meaning two piece for every QRS, and all of these PR intervals were the, were the same, that would be Mobitz two. But because the PR intervals reset themselves and get small again and get big, 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 and then drop, that's Winky Bot. That's Mobitz one. Okay? And then Third degree, which we're not seeing right now, that would be where the PR intervals complete. Some are big, some are small. There's no drop beats, and they're just completely random. There's AV disassociation. So that's it. Hope this was helpful, and we'll see you next time.